Praise the Lord. We want to again welcome everybody by way of internet. May the Lord bless you and your families. We pray that God gives you the desires of your heart according to his will and riches in and through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Today we're going to be ministering and talking about breaking the curse. Breaking the curse. And there's so much to this. We can't cover it all in one sermon. But we're going to get enough to know if we feel like we're cursed or we've had a generational curse passed down that maybe has never been really dealt with, you'll know before the end of this message how to be free. Amen. What is a curse? There's different kinds of curses. All right, we'll talk about some of them today. Can a Christian be cursed? Mm, we're going to talk about that today. Like I said, there's different kinds of curses. Where do curses come from? And if we're cursed, how can we break the curse? There are many different types of curses. And they, they come from, one, they can come from the devil for sure. He loves to curse people. But especially, he tries to count on God's people and being ignorant uneducated, unlearned, no knowledge in this arena when it comes to curses that he can get away with it. Okay, Because the Bible said, whatsoever a man thinketh, that's what he is. You think you're cursed, you'll be cursed. You think you're blessed, you'll be blessed. But not just by words only, but by how you live. See, many times, and I want to say another way we get cursed is we curse ourselves. That's right. By the words of our own mouth. The Bible says we entrap ourselves with our own words. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And we eat the fruit of it. Whether it's good fruit or bad fruit. So we have to pay close attention to what we say. Words are seeds. We plant them in our own lives and we plant them in our children's lives. You stupid, you idiot, you'll never make anything. They are seeds that bear fruit. And many times it breaks their hearts. It breaks their spirit. It breaks their will. That's not why God called us to be parents. Called us to raise them in the ways of the Lord. So we must be careful that we don't curse ourselves. The Bible says we're snared or trapped by the words of our own mouth. That's how important. You can curse yourself. How? Well, I guess I'll never get that new car. I guess I ain't meant to, I got, I'm going to always live in poverty. I ain't never going to get out of poverty. You're cursing yourself. That's not what God said. That's not what God said about His children. That's not what God promised you. But that's what you've been taught. That's what's been handed down to you. And no matter how you try to get out of it, it just keeps on circling around, circling around and coming back. Just when you think you get victory over something, a month, a week, an hour later, it's back. So sometimes we are our worst enemy. That's where they got that saying at for generations. We're our worst enemy. That's right. Devil don't have to do a whole lot in some of our lives. We do it for him. That's right, that's right. By our attitudes. Attitude. By our personalities. These are traces that come from our forefathers handed down to our parents and then handed down to us. Look, for you that have children, you look close. Oh, he's got my eyes. <laughs> oh, she's got my ears. They got my fingernails. Look, they got my big, my feet. <laughs> Come on. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because they're yours. They're your seed. They're supposed to have your traces. But now let's take it a step further. They're also supposed to have your traces when it comes to the things of God. But you wasn't always a Christian. Most of us wasn't born into a Christian home. We were born into heathen homes, Gentile homes, unbelieving homes, hellish homes in some cases, abusive homes in many ways. So those traces, those curses, if you want to call them that, they follow us. That's right. 
And no matter how much we hate it, no matter how much we despise it, no matter how much we try to get rid of it, those things follow us. They're in us. They become us. We hate it and became the very thing we hated in our parents, maybe. Our step-parents. Our no-parents. Grandmom, grandpa raised us. Aunt or uncle raised us. Wherever it came from, it left its mark on you. If your father, in most cases, was an alcoholic, most children become alcoholic. Why? Because they're raised in a generation of alcohol. That's right. People that are alcoholics. Mm -hmm. So it's, you don't have much of a fighting chance if you don't have Jesus. And all you grew up with was a beer or a shot or whiskey. Bringing in a keg of beer every week for the family party. So naturally you're going to be a wine bibber. Come on, somebody. Yeah, that's the right. Bible calls them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Drug addicts, the same thing. I've seen it happen. Yeah. I'm 41 years ministering. Life. I've seen them come in my office left and right over the years. Mm -hmm. My mother was a drug addict. My father was a drug addict. I, I'm a drug addict. I hate it. I, I, I don't want to be, but that's all I grew up around. That's all I've seen. Same with violence. When, you, when, a, when a husband beats the mother, when your father beats your mother, or, or, or whatever the case might be, a relative, and you see it, that you grow up and then you don't, know, you don't want to beat your wife. You love your wife, but you end up beating your wife. How can that be? Right. It's curses follows you right on yes. down the line. Amen. That's right. Because you Amen. didn't know any better. That's, right. That's what you were That's taught. That's what you were raised in. Yep. Amen. Prejudiced. People are prejudiced. They don't even know why. Why are you prejudiced? Because my mother and father was prejudiced. We don't like black people. We don't like yellow people. We don't like brown people. We don't like white people. White trash. Why? That's right. why? They never done nothing to you. My mama told me. My daddy told me. Amen. They were prejudiced. So it rubs off. Religion. There's curses all over the place. Why, why are you that religion? My mama and daddy was that religion. But they ain't helping you, man. You're still a devil. I don't care. I'm going to stay this religion all my life because that's my mom and papa was saying. Yeah. That's how we do it. Yeah. You see, we're victims many times. Yes. But then, there comes a time and a place in our lives when we meet Jesus Christ that those curses are supposed to break. Amen. That those curses are cut off. Amen. Amen. That everything changes. Behold, all old things become new. You're a new creature in Christ. Why, why aren't we still new creatures? That's the word. Why, why is it the opposite then in some of our lives? Because when we get set free, we don't stay free. We fall out of love with Jesus. That's why Jesus said, come back to your first love. Lest I remove your candlestick from its place or your name from the book of life. The truth of the matter is sometimes we get, we get head knowledge but we lose it in our heart. I know people can quote the Bible, they can pray, and they can cuss you at the same time. Amen. Something wrong with that. Amen. Go off on you in a minute. I have a right to go off. I'm mad. I have a right to hate. You don't know what they said about me. You don't know what they did to me. They treated me like dirt. I got a right to know you don't have a right. No. You don't have a right to get even. No, you don't. You don't have a right to hate. Vengeance. What you have a right to do is pray for them that curse you, the Amen. Bible says. Uh oh. Amen. Amen. What are we going to do with that one? Amen. Pray for them that curse you. Pray for them to despitefully use you and abuse you for Jesus' sake. Thank so we got a lot of growing up to do, don't we? Thank you, Jesus. We think we're all that. We know a few scriptures, boy. We're ready to condemn. We're ready to get self-righteous and let them know just how much Bible we know. I don't care how much you know. I care how much you live it. Amen. That's what God cares about. That's right. Don't show me how much you know. Show me how much you can do for Jesus. How do you follow the Lord Jesus Christ? Have those curses been broke in your life? Are you still trying to muddle through Christianity, carrying a chain of ball around your leg like this, and, and still trying to... It got to happen. No. You're in bondage. Amen. Some of you know the Bible inside and out. Jesus. 
That makes you even more accountable. Mm. Makes it more dangerous. Yes. You have to not just know it. You got to live it. Amen. It helps to know what we're talking about today. Believe me. Because we're going to get into how we can break the curses and keep them off. Because we'll come to an altar, Jesus. Let me just take for Jesus. These drugs are killing me, Lord. I, it's making me old before my time. Lord, I, I'm, I'm going to stick a needle in my arm one of these days. or snort something that's going to make me drop dead because it's happened so many times to so many others. Right. But Lord, I'm just, Lord, you know I'm sorry. You know I hate it. You know. Why? Then the next month, it's the same thing. Two months later, so some of them just stop coming to church because they can't take the conviction. Amen. Why? Because they're caught in that trap. They don't know how to get set free. Keep the curse off of them. I'm going to tell you how to today. But you're going to have to take work. Everything's work. Anything worth having is worth working for. That's right. Oh, you want to be in spiritual poverty the rest of your life? That's no fun. Bankrupt spiritually. Going to church, going through the motions. Wondering why everybody's having a good time, how they can get up and, and, and do what they do for Jesus, or you're sitting there all depressed, discouraged, fighting your demons. Because you you have you've allowed the devil to lie to you. Amen. See, that's another curse. That's right. Yeah, that's called the right. curse of lies. Mm -hmm. You've bought the curse of lies. The devil lied to you. You're still no good. You're still a hypocrite. You're still this. You're still that. You're still that. That's a lie. That's a curse that you didn't earn. It's a curse you don't deserve. That's a curse that Jesus died for to break that off of you. Yeah. You've got to learn to read the word, to know the word, put it in your heart. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That you have some equipment, some energy, something spiritual to fight back with. That's why he gave you the armor of God, but it's in the word. The Word of God will keep you from being recursed. Yes. If I can put it that way. Now it's time to reverse the curse. I don't care what your mama did. I don't care what your daddy did. I don't care what your parents did before them or our great ancestors. It doesn't matter. Because when we come to Jesus, that all changes. Amen. Your DNA changes. Amen. Ain't no more just mama and papa. Now it's the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Woo, glory be to Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. See, God, in the beginning, after Satan fell from heaven, caused all this grief, then Adam and Eve came on the scene, and God told them, listen, you can eat of every tree, every tree, all the fruit of every tree in the garden. I don't care for dozens and dozens of miles, wherever, everything is yours except one thing, one thing, one thing 